Gang, and welcome to another episode of Hard Factor. It is Thursday, August 15th, and we got PFT Commenter in the house tonight with us recording. Thanks for coming, PFT. No doubt, as Vice President of Football Operations for Hard Factor, you are one of my top three most important vice president of football operations job. So I'm happy to stop by whenever you guys need me. I, I would have guessed top seven with your frequency of text backs, but three's, three sounds good. Mm-hmm. I don't know. He's I, got, rock- I got some side projects. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's rocking the uh, fancy heads, headset again. So that, oh, that's, man. that's a and good his, sign. His focus is so, so interesting. Also, point of order. I want to get this out of the way right off the top before we jump into the show. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm infrequent with my text backs, but let, let everybody know that this – text chains that, that I'm on with you guys is probably the highest frequency of people doing the liked, laughed at, questioned, <laughs> emphasized, the non-text texts that just light up my phone. Look, so, yeah. we're, we're engaged, right? It we're just, engaged all the time. A, just takes we, a few clicks to do the thumbs up. Yeah, it's we a lot better eat, than us setting. We eat and breathe the news, okay, PFT? You got yes, that? Sorry. And, also, and I'll shit it out. Also, you did <laughs> shit it out this week on your show with Big Cat. You guys did Epstein and Fredo. No shout out to Barstool's best political news podcast. Are you going to just turn Hot Seat Cool Throne into like a fucking political like segment? Is that news the point? Okay. You coming for us? First <laughs> you of all, us? you said the F word. So I'd like you to check yourself right there. Right. We don't that say that. No, this is, you're right. allowed to say Fredo on this show. No, yeah. no. It's hurting my ears as somebody that got my <laughs> I got my 23 and me ancestry test back and I'm point zero one percent Italian. So hearing you ah. say that is like hearing somebody say point zero one percent of the N word. It's well, probably so, the snitch in you, not the Italian. Well, I'm fifty that, percent Fredo and it's my new favorite term. And, and, and I'm twenty five percent Fredo too. So I, I'm <laughs> I got a Fredo card. My dad now, is a hundred percent Fredo. I don't know how Fredo is. Like, I, I don't know how that turned into a political story because Chris Cuomo, I don't. Yeah, his brother's a politician. Well, because, Cuomo, yeah, the sides took it up or whatever, you know, that's did that's they? Because the, I because all I heard was people laughing at, at Cuomo because nobody really liked Cuomo. Well, I think maybe because CNN tried to get the video taken down and then uh, Don Jr. pointed that out on Twitter. So it became politicized. I got to be honest. I like Cuomo a lot more after watching the video and seeing how ready to pop the clutch he was on those. You like because you like that guy's aggressiveness my thing is that, well, <laughs> at like, the like, beer garden? <laughs> you know, like, we don't have this problem. PFT might have this problem where people come up to him from time to time and want to bug him. It, Very it high T, you PFT. You know. mm-hmm. Have you ever been in that situation where you <laughs> wanted I've, to pop the clutch on someone? I've taken pictures for, for PFT before. Yeah, usually uh, what happens is a girl and she's like, hey, PFT, what's up? Uh, can I grab your butt? And I'm like, no, you can't. That's harassment. And then it gets into an altercation. I walk away. I'm sick of all these girls just coming up wanting to make out and grab my butt. It's a tough life. It is. Now, tough. I will say that I also didn't have a problem with, with Cuomo like getting aggressive, uh, but he compared the Fredo thing to the N word, which is the worst like analogy of all time. He'd had a couple pops, though. He'd had a couple ha- pops. A couple hundred right. pops. Yeah. It was, it was beer garden <laughs> IPAs. All right. All right. We're getting off the rails a little bit. Right. Let's get back on track for the show. So first up, our first topic we're going to go over is the state of Barstool's union. That's why we have PFT on. Want to right. get a little inside look at what's going on with this union dispute between Dave and AOC. And then Mark and Pat will take us through a news buffet of other headlines. So first up, the state of Barstool's union. Um, Wes gave us the high level last night. Uh, basically what happened was uh, PFT's communist friend, Ryan Rosillo started mm-hmm. a <laughs> union on his first day of work at the Ringer, right? Is that how it started? Great My understanding start. is that ESPN sent Ryan Rosillo in as an agitator to stir okay. up labor trouble and right. then wreck the ringer from the inside and then go back to Bristol as a hero. That we all know sense. that Rosillo has communist tendencies. He's not, he's not been shy about that. Right. So naturally, he gets to the ringer. Immediately, they unionize. Dave stirs up some shit talking about how he you know, went over this when, when Gawker unionized. Then AOC took the bait, said he was breaking the law by uh, saying that Barstool employees couldn't form a union or that he would smash it. Uh, then Don Jr. got involved. He retweeted saying that, you know, AOC doesn't want the smoke. Now AOC is using the stand up to Barstool moment to generate campaign contributions, mm-hmm. donations. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Dave, right before we sat down to record, went on Fox News saying that he doesn't think AOC will take him up on his challenge to debate him publicly. So PFT is somebody who sits very close to Dave. What's happening on the inside here? Well, I, no, I, correction, I don't actually sit in Nantucket, so I don't sit that close to Dave. Oh, but, we haven't been but, to the new office, so we wouldn't know burn. anyways. Yeah, so we just yeah. have to, we have to guess. vacation days burn. So here's the, here's the thing. Um, 
I, what AOC did with her fundraising email, ironically, is exactly what Dave Portnoy would do if he were right. in that situation. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, try, uh, yeah. To, try to make oh, money Oh, absolutely. Off it. I mean, Dave had the, the Union Buster t-shirts up within, I think, six hours or whatever. Oh, um, yeah. So, so, yeah, what Dave did was he, um, ironically, Dave's getting a lot of the shit that Bill Simmons should be getting. Bill Simmons is so happy that Dave just started did he, running did he off bust the, Did Bill Simmons bust the, the, the Ryan's union? Bill, Bill Simmons, Simmons hates unions? Bill Simmons He's, has not said anything about his union. He has yet to acknowledge it. He's pissed uh, off about it. But the thing is, like, Dave being so publicly anti-union took all the heat off the actual unionization effort going on at the Ringer. And so Dave basically said publicly what Bill Simmons wants to do privately. Um, so then the way of the world came crashing down on Dave because he did break the law. You're not allowed to discourage employees from unionizing. It's uh, pretty clearly against the law, which he broke repeatedly mm. and explicitly without uh, regard for human life. He was just like, he was in yeah, the zone. Yeah, I mean, he's, you yeah, talk exactly. about shooters he, being in the zone. Dave was in the zone yesterday. And <laughs> the, the more people hated what he said, the more he wanted to tweet about it more. Um, yeah. so Dave got into this thing where he was like, okay, I'm going to be, I'm going to be Vince McMahon, Dave, and, uh, become an evil boss character and people are reacting to it. It worked. To, it's and moving it worked. units. It worked. It, it's moving units. I mean, the, the bottom line billion, is I'm, over I'm actually like clicks. in favor of, of unions. I think unions by and large are a very, very good thing. Um, as your vice president of football operations, I can't discourage you if you, if you guys want to unionize on me, that would actually, I don't want to. Like tell you, well, do it. Jeff, Jeff Lowe. That sounds like a lot of work. I'll just guilt you into (laughs) sending me money. Um, But I mean, like, can you actually break the law on Twitter? Like, I threatened to hook my cat to my veins today. Is that legal? That sounds like animal cruelty. Can you actually like literally break the law? Well, that's how. That's that. We're a comedy site, right? So it's parody. I don't think you can. I don't think you can break the law on Twitter with saying stuff. You can break the law on Twitter. Big time. Peter, I don't think so. Peter Thiel basically does what Mark's talking about, except with young bloods, not with like kittens. Just. Just yeah, gets young, young fresh people. new hemoglobin. Up sure, in, talking about blood bags. But no, you can break the law on Twitter. Okay. Um, it's it's been done before, and the fact that Dave is a boss, it was like a pretty cut and dry breaking of the law that he did many times over. Um, but he Elon he Elon Musk himself. But will they will they prosecute him? Will they find him? Probably no. not, because. Uh, this administration has been a little bit lax in enforcing those kind of policies. <laughs> They're more pro-employer as opposed to pro-union. So um, if it was a Democrat in the White House, they probably would try to enforce it. So my guess is Dave's going get, to get away scot-free on it um, and not get in trouble. Yeah. But he, he did break the law, and he, I know for a fact he's been reported by a few people uh, because of, of what he said. And so then, uh, then it just became a huge fucking thing. And uh, everyone yeah, then was mad national at news, right? Yeah, national. Now, but the irony there. is, back in 2015, when Gawker was unionizing, um, and it, you know what? Like that's all Dave. Dave was kind of turning into the skid and doubling down on things and just trying to draw attention and troll everybody uh, that didn't know what he was talking about. That's what Dave does. Big Cat caught a lot of strays in this yesterday. I don't know if you saw this, but huh. Big Cat was saying things like, "I'm normally pro union." But in this case, I don't think a union makes sense. That's because and he owns part of the Because he's an owner. <laughs> People flip the fuck out on him. Um, <laughs> and he, but he was trying to understand why it would make sense. He honestly yeah, didn't boss know. Yeah, boss cat. But, but the thing is, uh, <laughs> if, you, if you look back at to how Gawker unionized back in 2015, they were saying almost all the same stuff. Like there were many people at Gawker that didn't want to unionize and wrote publicly about it that were making the same concerns that that Big Cat was making. But now that it's 2019 and they've been in a union for a while, they fucking hate anybody that has that opinion right now. And so Dan was being very open-minded. I think he still is being open-minded too. He doesn't understand a lot of it. Um, Yeah, but what does he he make? But he's learning. Yeah. What what does he make a year? What's that? What? Yeah, I said, oh, yeah, what does need, Big Cat yeah, make you, a year? Release the, release the pay stubs. We need to know. How, what does Big Cat make? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I have no idea. 75000 an episode, right? Don't, <laughs> don't, don't ask, don't, don't tell. I, well, I don't if, you're asking you, you, what, if you're asking what part of my take makes or what Dan makes overall, I can tell you part of my take. We each make $75,000 an episode, and that's after taxes. Nice. So that's, that's, net, right. that's net. Who would need to unionize with that? That's great. That's nice. 
Yeah. Um, right. I don't know. Union sound like a lot of work, and it also sounds like Dave's going to be in a shitload of trouble when AOC is eligible to be president when she's old enough in 30 years. AOC fucked up. This is going to come back to Dave in 30 years <laughs> when, when AOC is old enough to be president. Right. Yeah, because she's definitely going to keep climbing. It's just wild that he may actually be like affecting her polling numbers in some way at all. Um, it's I odd. I thought it was I mean, good for both of them. I don't think it's bad for I AOC. I thought it was bad for AOC. It was, no, it was a I total trap. She walked into them. a trap. It's press Yeah, for I think she no, took I, the bait. I, I, think, I think everyone wins in that scenario. Yeah, yeah, but now maybe maybe Dave will get the real Donald Trump mention, and that's what we're all going after. Ooh, and that, predict it. And that is what you can now bet on because we got ourselves a new predict it market. Will Donald Trump tweet the word barstool? Will it be on his feed uh, by the end of August? And uh, if you sign up at predictit.org slash promo slash hard factor 20, you can get 20 bucks on us on your first deposit. And then you can wager on if Trump will mention Barstool by the end of the month. What do you guys now, think? Now, well, now, PFT, here, here's what I think. It's that yes is at 10 cents a share and no is at like 90 cents a share because it goes to a dollar, right? So it's uh-huh. right. yes or no. You're allowed to wager, I think, up to like eight hundred ish dollars. Eight fifty. Yeah, right. Per per market, I've got four hundred fifty dollars in my account. That means I could get forty five hundred shares theoretically at, at yes, mm-hmm. and then when they pays out, that means my four fifty turns into forty five hundred dollars. Can you use your sphere of influence to get Donald Trump to to tweet Barstool so I can make forty five? Fair question. <laughs> Fair question. Yeah, that's you kind of owe question. it to us. Yeah, yeah. Probably. Probably not me. I think, I mean, Dave's going for it. If you listen to him on the radio when he was yeah, crafting he's his trying. response tweet. He's trying to get yes. it. The only reason that he wrote that tweet back calling her Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was because he thought that that would be retweeted by Don Jr., which it was, and he thought that it would then in turn catch Donald Trump's eye. Exactly. See, we're halfway he there. Would, he would respond to it. So, um, that, D- Dave is doing his best to try to get retweeted by Donald Trump. You can argue whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, it's a good thing when I have 4,500 shares. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> if, I you're, if you're I, betting, I it could be. <laughs> I think those odds are actually a little bit underweight. I would say that ah, yes. it's probably 25% chance that it happens. If I were you to heard it back. here. You well, heard you, it just, here. you just lost Mark's entire uh, predicted account for him there. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's 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 helping me out two and a half fold. But I have to bet now. I might have to I might have to take two minutes off the show to make take the off bet. Mark. No, I'm right. But it's, the, it's priorities. Yeah. It's a yes or no. It's also a 75 percent chance that he doesn't mention the bar stool uh, in that hypothetical. So nah, that's all good. All right. Take us over the news buffet, guys. Oh, that's me. Hang on. So. You, you didn't read your internet comment. You tricked me there. So Steve uh, King. Yeah, we had a bunch, but we're running long, so we got to right, get going. So Steve King had an interesting day on Wednesday. Not my favorite novelist, Stephen King, but everyone's favorite politician to say, that guy's a fucking idiot, Iowa Congressman Steve Arnold King. Ah, that's Steve King. What did SAK do this time, you ask? What? What? Well, what? while yeah, speaking w- in Urbandale, Iowa, and defending anti-abortion legislation, he sponsored in Congress that does not have exceptions for rape or incest, he questioned whether there would be any population of the world left if not for rape and incest throughout our entire history. What a great point. Yeah. It's a so, well thought out wow. point. Um, he, he, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. You want to hear what he actually said? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we'll hear the quote. What if we went back through all the family trees and just pulled out anyone who was a product of rape or incest? Would there be any population of the world left if we did that? Uh, that's what he asked the crowd. He said, considering all the wars and all the rapes and pillages that happened throughout all these different nations, I know that I can't say that I was not a product of that, which leads me to the fact that you're of Scandinavian descent, PFT. Uh, you've got to be a big proponent of Viking rape helping the earth, right? Could, can you weigh in on this one? I'm not yeah. going to be boxed into agreeing with rape in any – and it, nice try. That was good journalism. Pil- but, 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 but if anybody what could I will commiserate say, with Steve King, it yeah, would be, you, it would be somebody – I think that Steve King is correct in the fact that uh, there would have been way fewer wars because the entire British, like the entire line of succession of the British monarchy would have been wiped out by that law. Mm. So they but were all British incestuous. Monarchy. Prima and, I got, and, I got, I, and they were they were all the ones that were responsible for all the wars, probably the aforementioned wars that he was discussing. So well, in that case, I mean, he might be correct. Even if you yeah. go back to a uh, famous novelist, uh, Homer, uh, Helen of Troy, right? She was raped, wasn't she? The well, right, but, but Steve, like, King's, Steve King's scenario means that there was not a single generation that had a, like, con- consensual baby born. Because, I think you guys are missing the point on this, though. Because uh, he's saying humanity would have been wiped out. 
So, you so, you guys think that Steve King was asking this question rhetorically, but he wasn't. He was just asking the question. Okay, he was just asking. Hey, he's insane. He's crazy. Yeah. This, is, this isn't let's, a soft corner. It's a padded right, corner because you need to put 20, that guy in a cell. That's crazy. Wait, don't think that and don't say it. <laughs> it's yeah, I mean, even even if even if that was true, like twenty thousand years ago, does he, is he propo- he's saying we should still continue to rape with, the <laughs> right. with, with, with like no eight sense. billion people on Earth? We should still rape. Like we're yeah, okay we now. Saw, we're we're overpopulated. We're clubs. Yeah. And uh, be hunter gatherers too. Just got, get we, more gathering. We've got plenty of people on Earth. What's Life next? starts at conception. All right, guys. Let me preface this story by saying it was still developing at the time of this taping. So by the time you're hearing this story, uh, some things may have developed further. But yesterday, uh, there was a major standoff hostage situation between the Philadelphia police in North Philadelphia and some suspected drug dealers. So officers were serving a warrant to a house near the corner of uh, North 15th Street and West Butler in Philly. And this is from the NBC uh affiliate uh, affiliate they say quote as officers rushed upstairs a gunman waiting downstairs with an ak-47 fired several rounds through the ceiling uh. police returned fire while several officers escaped through windows and doors and an hour long or hours long standoff ensued it Crazy. sounds terrible it sounds like a grand theft auto like video game scenario yeah it's bad and uh, yeah and i saw there was videos of like the cops being harassed by people who are like standing by because it was a long ass like you know Situation. Yeah, it was so. over four hours at the time of this taping. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, two officers were trapped and are still trapped inside the building as of now. Jesus. Uh, so the uh, the Philadelphia Police Commissioner Richard Ross is, is calling it a potential hostage situation that they haven't come out with more details than that necessarily. But yeah, crazy um, day in Philly. Yeah, so six officers were shot at the time of this recording. Uh, luckily, all their injuries seem to be minor, thank God, and they're all listed in stable condition. Uh, this was apparently like a complete and total firefight that lasted more than four hours. One suspect, suspect was taken into custody while the other remained barricaded inside, continuing to fire out the window at police who took cover behind cars and whatever they could find on the streets. Um, Mayor Jim Kennedy was quoted as saying, I'm a little angry about someone having all that weaponry and all that firepower, but we'll get to that another day. Uh, officers have been trying to negotiate with the gunman, pleading for him to surrender, but apparently they dial in and he just picks up the phone and says nothing. Yeah, I mean, how much... How, oh. Tough to negotiate with that. That's yeah. scary, yeah. yeah. That's not um, there were also reports of a seventh officer who was responding to the scene being injured in a car accident along with a pedestrian at the corner of North Broad and West uh, Cayuga Street, uh, which I did a little Googling, and that's it's about 0.8 miles from the scene, so it doesn't sound too related, more like a police officer ran over a guy. You're insinuating maybe he's using it as cover when he accidentally ran over the guy. He was trying to get there, probably. Yeah, and, I uh, feel like yeah. all units were responding. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 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 I, I'm insinuating that the officer made up that incident so that he didn't have to go to the real one. He was Because the name of the street, it sounds so made up. Like, that's just like an old-timey <laughs> car horn sound. Cayuga Street. Yeah, uh, he's, like, looking around trying to figure out what, what street he's on. Somebody honks their horn. He's like, uh, Cayuga Street. Yeah, exactly. Or it could have been his wife. He just, like, had his wife, like, go out in front of the car and get, like, nicked so he didn't have to, like, respond to Yeah, it's it. kind of oh, like no. you didn't do your homework and there's a snow day, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah. Anyway, right. but for the other six officers, and, well, honestly, all officers, it's terrible. And yeah, I, I hope this sad situation story. resolves itself peacefully, but we'll see. Apparently, squirrels in New York City have become very aggressive this summer and are biting and scratching the shit out of pedestrians, most of their victims being idiots trying to feed them or eat food near these psychopath squirrels. Uh, you want to weigh in on this one, PFT? Are you personally impacted by this, or do yeah, the have you been bitten know, by a squirrel? Do the squirrels know you have a three hundred pound dog? I, I'm personally <laughs> impacted by this because I like to touch at least thirty squirrels a year. They're okay. fun. They're like they're like college squirrels. You know, college squirrels are a little bit different. Used to than people. Your used to people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so uh, you can get. You can actually. Pet what the them. fuck is a college squirrel? What, you know, I like know you quad, the quad, cat, you know, so you the wouldn't quad. know. But if <laughs> who was you attended I, who was a four-year university, you would know that there are these squirrels on college campuses <laughs> that will walk yeah. right up to you, and you can pet them, you can scratch them. They're not afraid of people. Um, nice. That's in what a college squirrel Park, is. Okay. There's college squirrels, which are not – they're not timid at all. They'll come right up to you. So I'm devastated by this because I like to touch 20, 30 squirrels a year. Yeah, I had a different take on this. PFT used to come home from class, and I was like, how was it out there? I hope you got to 30 – Already, because I would probably not be petting squirrels if I was you these No, days. probably. They're yeah. dangerous. It's in Bryant Park, like you said, or Square. It's in Rockefeller Park. Um, there are reports of people trying to chase the squirrels off, and instead of running away, the squirrels are just, like, standing their ground and, and like, bear, yeah. bear clawing them. Like just New York, New York City, the wildlife is trying to repel the people of New York City. It's fi- they're finally fighting back. Oh, it's like it, that shitty M. Night Shyamalan movie? They're trying to reclaim it. Like, it's too densely yeah. populated. There's too many trash bags on the sidewalk. It smells well, terrible. Get out of here. I mean, 
Mm. Several people have reported being bitten. I don't know. Maybe it's fucking rabies. Has anyone checked the, <laughs> checked the bite it's, and scratch? It's that or they have, they have the taste for blood I now. feel like we could solve this tomorrow if someone just was tested for rabies. That's true. <laughs> I don't know. All right, guys. Former heavyweight champion of the world, Tiger owner, and convicted rapist, Mike Tyson, claims that he smokes $40,000 of weed a month on his podcast, Hotboxing with Mike Tyson. It's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> Great name. Well, let, mm. Let's get into it. Let's see if it's possible or not. So Tyson okay. asked his co-host, former NFL player Eben Britton, how much weed they smoke at Tyson's 40-acre 40 40 marijuana farm, cleverly named Tyson Ranch. To which he responded, we smoke 10 tons of weed at the ranch a month. Also impossible. Their guest on that episode, rapper Jim Jones, replied by saying, quote, that's a lot of weed. Yeah. 10 tons? Good take. Good take yeah. by Jim Jones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, this sounds like a crazy amount of weed, right? So, so let's do the math and see exactly how this would shake out. And let, let's start with the 10 tons a month claim. All right. Well, we have yeah. to assume if it's Mike Tyson, he's definitely Monster Hits Only Club, right? Right. Oh, and we'll oh, get to sure. that. Right. Yeah. So, so a, a ton is 2,000 pounds, right? So 10 tons would be 20,000 pounds. And so far, you're right. Yeah, I'm assuming that Tyson's <laughs> preferred intake method is smoking blunts. Don't don't ask me why. I think he eats weed because he's threatening. You got to Yeah, you got to be I cooking if you're I making think, you know, that I think much. he shovels actual flour. <laughs> That's possible. But <laughs> yeah. for the sake of argument, monster hits only. Let's say it's blunts. All right. Uh, and let's say there's an average of three grams of weed in a Tyson fatty, which for the record is a very big blunt. It's clearly it's not blunt. for Tyson. Yeah, a, a blunt true. usually takes like what 10 minutes to smoke and, and let's assume that if you're smoking more than four blunts an hour you probably start to get sick and mm. i'm assuming that at age 53 and after all the hits he took tyson is probably sleeping a lot so let's let's assume he's he's awake for 13 hours a day well, right? couldn't you just mm. stop the story here and, and go back to how many hits he took and just say he's an he's an idiot and he doesn't know what 10 tons is and he doesn't know what well, i did all this math okay, Mark. All right, so fine, i did all the math all right. okay so all right so four <laughs> blunts an hour at three grams of blunt that's 12 grams an hour, right? And 12 grams times 13 waking hours would be an average of 156 grams per day, give or take. This is a lot of numbers. Yeah, it's wow, yeah, of easy to follow. Yeah, can you just get to it? <laughs> it's impossible, correct? I quit the story. It's, it's impossible. It's, you can't smoke 10 tons. It's impossible. It would mean that Tyson would have to have 2,000 people on his ranch actively smoking 13 hours a day to smoke 10 tons a month. Okay. okay However, so, yeah, turns out Mike Tyson is a liar. Yeah. <laughs> you can't trust right. anybody <laughs> these days. Exactly. Man, now, but that's a lot of weed also. Right, <laughs> so, right. Yeah. He, <laughs> his forty his forty k of weed a month claim though however is more more plausible so the average price of a dis of a dispensary high quality pound of hydroponic is like twenty two hundred bucks, which would be like eighteen pounds uh, a month if they're dropping forty k that's more believable mm -hmm. but still fucking insane. I believe like Buddha Ben could do it. I really do. If there's yeah anybody that can make this he happen, could. actually Buddha Ben, if if you're looking for a gig, man. This sounds like it'd be right up your alley. Do a documentary on how much weed Mike Tyson. Mike over. Tyson Ranch would oh, be so awesome much weed. Place. Or Buddha Ben started his own competitive ranch to try to beat 40k worth in a month. It's gonna take a lot of money. I'd start with a doc. Hey, what do you guys like to say? And that's Pat <laughs> talking numbers. That's me talking numbers, baby. <laughs> All right, I got one out of uh, the Hard Factor Boys and PFT, PFT's home state of Virginia. Seems mm. like an insane philanthropist, time traveling from the future past or an alternative universe person has been leaving surprises on people's front porches in the middle of the night and it's not flaming bags of shit uh some guy has been putting a tv on his head and yeah. he's been walking around like in all black and like with a tv head he looks like he's out of like a 1980s mtv uh video and he's been leaving very old very free boxes of televisions on residence doorsteps in henrico virginia so you guys heard about this yeah it's freaky yeah Read have you seen it. the videos yeah, the guy comes up. He's like, his skin is completely covered. You can't see anything of him. The it's TV scary. over the head. It's, it's What's crazy. What's his deal? What's his deal? He might be f like football claws, like football apple seed. He's just walking around making sure that people have got some tubes that they can watch some pigskin on once the, once the season starts. I think but these are like. But yeah, they're I mean, trash. You, they're trash, yeah, you, right? You're right. You could see some football games because these are like the three to four channel max TVs. Um, well, some residents, uh, one in particular, Jim Brushbank, says he's committed to his trade. Uh, <laughs> he wants to be known as the TV Santa Claus. I don't know. And we got an old tube TV style at 13 inches that I thought my son brought home, but it was just this weirdo. So um, this guy left 50 old box television sets at 50 different homes all overnight Sunday morning last Sunday. And several of the exchanges were caught on the front door camera things. And they've been evaluated by the Henrico police who are communicating that the situation is a harmless prank. But 
The same thing happened in a different neighborhood nearby last August, so literally a year ago. So who knows what TV Man's Endgame is or where he's getting all, all yeah. these old tiny TVs, but I'm a little nervous. There's got to be yeah. like a weird I like, I like it. How many yeah. of those TVs do you think get used afterwards? Like none. They're probably not functional. It's one to get rid of a TV. Yeah. Like a piano. You got to plug it in. You got to plug it in and try. Yeah. It has to be PFT's take because it's August, so it's like preseason football. Does it he come with a remote? August. It could be that he was a he was an electronics store owner that fell into a coma like and, an and woke Shack? up and was like, no one wants to buy these fucking TVs. That's why I said <laughs> it's like a time them. traveler yeah. from the future past. Yeah, like, very possible. Yeah. Trust right. trust me, when you, if you have a free TV that's dropped, dropped off on your front doorstop, it doesn't matter. You're going to plug it in at least one time. You're going to see if it turns on, if it works. Even if it works, you're still going to throw it out. But you mm. have to check. My concern is what this guy does, what his in-game is, like you guys were talking That's about. That's what I'm saying. You, you don't just stop dropping off TVs on people's doorsteps with a TV on your head. That's just not something you decide to quit cold turkey. He's, wor he's, no, he's into up, it. He's working up to something big. Yes. Uh, like, yeah, he's working up to something big. I also. I guess he gets shot on someone's I'm property. Also, I'm also shocked that these <laughs> are <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm also that's, shocked. That's, that's a something big. I'm shocked that these TVs don't have like the built-in VHS, uh, like the, combos. Yeah, the combos. Like combo TVs. And then they already have like a tape in it. With it's just you turn it on, it's just him jerking off with the TV head. <laughs> See, that would be a great. Prank. I'm surprised that's not That'd what's be a really great happening. prank. Yeah. All right, guys, we're wrapping it up. We're, uh, we're we went a little long today, but that's okay. We had our buddy PFT Commodore on, Vice President of Football Operations. Thank you for being on PFT. Uh, before we go, let's talk predict it one more time. Again, there's a fantastic lineup, and it's uh, it's will uh, Donald Trump tweet mention Barstool by August 31st. Right now, it's at 10 cents. I'm throwing my whole stack at it. Yeah, everyone's everyone. You should bet no. Yeah, bet no. But if you want to bet and you're not on <laughs> Predict It yet, go to predictit.org slash promo slash hard factor 20. We'll match your first 20 bucks. Uh, and that's going to do a fire factor. Pretty solid guest this week so far with the Mooch, PFT commenter, and uh, an accidental Anderson Cooper. Mm -hmm. uh, he hasn't tweeted me back. I keep tweeting at him saying thanks for coming on, Anderson. If you think that's <laughs> impressive, remember we have a September to Remember coming up, leading off strong with a live power hour at Eastside Tavern in Austin, Texas, our hometown, on September 4th. And we're going to be joined by PFT for that one. And then a live debate show from Houston on Friday, September 13th from Axelrad Beer Garden. That's going to be uh, during the Democratic debates in Houston. Uh, it's going to be fun and exciting. A lot of people there. As always, thank you guys so much for listening. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Hard Factor News. Maybe send some T-shirt ideas to the boys. Uh, spread the word that Hard Factor is the best way to get your daily news. And most importantly, have a great fucking day.